It's definitely an honor to be in the house of God tonight. Always an honor and a privilege to stand before God's people and to speak the word of the Lord. Us as ministers that are in this house tonight realize that it's not a light thing, but it's a very, very heavy thing. Something that takes much preparation, much time, much concent concentration to hear the voice of God for people. I was talking to my wife today and I was, we were looking at an old DVD when we were on, on television in Andalusia. And um, it was in 2008, and Micah was a little baby, and I was holding him, we were laughing at it. I was trying to do a commercial about something that was going on in our ministry, and I couldn't do it. I just, we just kept laughing. And I said, I need a blue screen, something to read. I said, um, I'm definitely not a motivational speaker because if I'm not anointed, I'm in trouble. Amen. I think we need to be that way because God calls preachers today and He places an anointing upon men and women of God to be able to do supernaturally what you can't do naturally. That's right. I will say that for all of you that may not be a preacher or called into ministry in what you would think ministry is, that you are still called into something and without an anointing of the Holy Spirit, there is no supernatural ability operating in your natural ability. 
And if you don't have supernatural operating in your natural, then you are a far cry from operating in a normative Christian life. We have become very subnormal in the church today with what we're able to operate and walk in because we have been dependent upon maybe some things just come easier for some people. But when we become very dependent upon the Holy Spirit, we dare not try to even tackle an assignment unless we know the Lord is going to be there to empower us, to use us. Amen. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. There, and understand that there are a lot of different types of ministries today, but God is still calling men and women to the forefront. And those who are called by God are anointed by God. And that anointing does not come cheap. It's very costly. It's expensive. It's not easily made. It has to go through a process. And God is trying to get us to a place in this day where we walk in an anointing. That's beyond anything we've ever walked in before because the task that lies before us is a big one. Yes, especially when you start walking in revelation of God's kingdom. And the more revelation that God trusts to you, the greater responsibility there is put upon your life to properly speak forth revelation and do it in a way that's going to cause people to hear the word and receive it, but not hear it in a way that turns them off to it. I understand that we've been in a process over the last few years where we know that God has given a lot of promise to us. And a lot of things that God has spoken to us may have not gone exactly the way we saw it or predicted if we could have predicted the way it was going to happen. Because we have to understand that God is still a God that calls things which be not as though they were. See, when God calls you, He calls you because He bases what He calls you into. He shows you the end from the beginning. I'm so glad He does, Pastor Mike, because if He didn't show us the end from the beginning and He showed us the process we'd have to go through to get to the end of the promise, we probably wouldn't even start on the adventure or we would faint of heart is what would happen. We would say it's impossible. It's impossible to go through that much. It's impossible for one man, one woman to go through that much hell and make it. But I got news for you. We're still here, aren't we? Amen. Tonight we're still here. There's some things that should have done took you out. Should have done lost your mind. Should have done died. The car accident didn't take you out. You're still here. The overdose didn't take you out. You're still here. We're still here. Because there's a process that God starts us on. And that's why a lot of times when we realize that God takes us to the mountain, we have great vision. We have great revelation. Because what we see from one mountaintop is the next mountaintop. But we don't realize to get from one mountain to the next mountain, we go through valleys. And through the valleys are the strongholds of life where we face the giants. So you got to understand that when Israel was encamped in one mountain and the Philistines in another mountain, there was a valley, and in that valley was Goliath. And for the, the ability to go from one place that's high to another place that's higher, you have to go through a low place where you have to face the giant. And I want to tell you something, the giant oftentimes can be intimidating. That's right. But if you continue the process, God's going to bring you into your destiny. Now, I want to talk to you tonight if I can be able to bring this word out the way I feel that it needs to be brought out. So bear with me. Let me build foundation. And I want to talk to you about a revelation about five specific keys that the Lord's working in us and through us to get us to a place in the next coming years. When I was in Jacksonville, I don't know, I guess at the end of 2010, I began to talk about 2012 and a 40-year campaign. Now, I don't know how many knows that the number 40 is the number for generation. You have to know this, especially when interpreting Scripture, when Jesus talks about a certain generation, we understand it was a 40-year period. We understand that 40 years, there could be three generations alive at one time. You have God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. We can have a son, a father, a grandfather living on the earth at the same time. So there's a generation that the Lord's speaking to me about that He's going to get us to something, but it's not going to come easy. You have to realize, church, that in spite of our own busy schedules and our own agendas, that God has an agenda. I said God has an agenda. God has a dream. And what happens in our lives is that God's dream has to become our vision.
And if God's dream does not become our vision, we're going to pursue doing things that may be good. But if we're not going after God in the sense that we're taking hold or allowing the vision of God to arrest us or the dream of God to arrest us in such a way that we become apprehended by God and his purpose, we'll never fulfill what God has called. And we go around a wilderness just like the children of Israel while another generation is dying out while God's preparing another generation generation to send to the forefront. God is patient. God has time. I know we don't think God has time. We think he's going to run out of time, but we need to realize that God is eternal. God stands outside of space and time. And though time to us is linear, it starts somewhere and it ends somewhere. It's chronological. We have a starting place and an ending place. With God, it's cyclical. In other words, he sees it as a complete whole. It can start here, but it can go right around circle, make a revolution, and start right back where it started before. So God is patient. He has time. He has time to allow one generation to pass away, to raise up another generation to fulfill the purpose. Meanwhile, God calls prophets to plant seed of the kingdom in his people, trying to hand select somebody that's going to take the message of the kingdom and step up and allow it to be so transplanted in their hearts that they're going to be a voice crying in the wilderness, make your past straight, prepare you the way of the Lord. You're not hearing me, church. Because I know we've been in a process, and I know all hell's come against us. I know anybody that's been on the forefront, I'm talking to those that's in ministry for the most part, and those who just know they want to obey God, that all hell's been against you these last couple years. And you thought that when you got into 2012, everything was just going to get better, but you found out things didn't get better. Things actually got a little bit harder. But the reality is that when things begin to get hard pressed, it's because God is about to birth you into something you've never walked in before. He still says, what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, and what's not entered the hearts of man, God has prepared for those who love him. Ha, ah, Jesus. It's good. I'll take you to a familiar passage of Scripture, if you will allow me. Isaiah chapter 40. Man, I went through Scripture this these last several days, and I have got pages and pages <coughs> of notes that I dotted down. None of it said, talk about me. And I went through some notes from a few weeks ago when I preached a message. And the Lord said, talk to him about that again. Well, not again, but I've preached on this before. But the Lord wanted me to speak to you about it because it was a prophetic word for the church. And see, when you have a prophetic word for the church, you have to be careful what church or what allotment of believers you release that word to. Because just because you have one word for one assembly or an allotment does not mean that word is going to fit into the other allotment. you got to hear me. you got to remember Jesus in the book of Revelation. He had seven letters the seven different churches that were alive and well at the same time in Asia Minor at the same time. But he did not give the same word. So be wary of those say, I got the word to the church and they posted on Elijah List. And I like Elijah List. I'm not talking bad about him. But that works for everybody. No, it's not. You got to find where you're at when you're reading these prophetic words and see, does this apply to me? Does this bear witness to my spirit? Because Jesus has seven different words to seven different churches. Each one was different because each one dealt with where they were at, Pastor Mike. Each one dealt where they were at. And we can't deal with where somebody else is at to be able to encourage you to get you where you need to go. You got to get into the mind frame of God and see what the Spirit of God is saying to this church, to this people. God who knew who was going to gather here tonight. So in Isaiah chapter 40. The Bible begins in verse 28, and I'm going to really reflect on one verse out of this, but I'm going to just read into it. Some of you are going to have to know that everything you've been through is for a reason, and it's, it's to bring you somewhere. You hear me? It's to bring you somewhere. I'm going to say that again. Everything you've been through is to bring you somewhere. Everything you thought, you know, everything you thought, well, this is it. This is what God's called me to do, and then it doesn't work out. It was to bring you somewhere. <laughs> Amen. That what you started, and you think it failed. You know, God said it was to bring you somewhere. Come on. 
He said, well, I didn't know I was going to go through that kind of hurt. It was to bring you somewhere. I know it broke your heart. I know that you had high expectation for it. But it was to bring you somewhere because God had to start something in you. And God had to prepare you to get you to a place because where he's going to take you, you got to have the experience where you'll be able to sustain when he gets you to that place. Amen. Verse 28 says, have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? He neither faints nor is he weary. His